Well, why does Christ church still stray from sound faith? That's, that's what I want you to consider with me tonight. And, and the reasons, I believe, and, and I found many of them, I'm only going to cover one tonight. I believe in, if you look at modern evangelical culture, you can see that, that these dangers that I'm going to start tonight listing are present. The first one being an improper understanding of the authority of Scripture. An improper understanding that this is to be the measure, the guard, the, the, the template that we hold up to, to measure any ministry and any person. And nothing else comes to this level. And we are not to get our counsel and direction and understanding from any source that is incongruent, that doesn't agree with, that is not square with, God's Word. So, God says you can't separate growth in the truth from His Word. Now, keep we're backing through the Bible, but back up to John 17. And this is one of those doctrinal verses that you should have uh, underlined or highlighted or starred or marked. It's one of the foundational reasons that we even gather. And the Scriptures say this. We're talking this morning about justification and sanctification. The primary tool of sanctification is the Spirit of God using the Word of God to conform us to the image of God. Here's here's the, the basis for that in John 17 and verse 17. That's an easy one to remember, 17, 17. It says, Jesus said this, Sanctify them by your truth. And here it is, your word is truth. Jesus, God the Son, is talking to God the Father. And Jesus says to God the Father, your word is truth. And he was speaking then. And and previously in, in, in his preaching, he'd called the Bible, the Old Testament, the Scriptures. And he said they cannot be broken. So what he was saying was that the entire canon of the Old Testament, which Ezra codified, which Jesus read and most likely memorized, in which he taught from that entire 22 Jewish books, which have been divided into smaller pieces into our 39 English Old Testament books, all of that he called God's Word, and all of it he said was truth. And in chapter 16, he said that what the apostles were going to write was going to be the Scripture, the New Testament. So Jesus Christ looked back and affirmed the entire Old Testament as God's truth. And then he breathed out through his disciples the New Testament. And through the apostles and prophets, we have the truth of God. But look what it says. Thy word is truth. When the church has unsound faith, that unsound faith starts with an improper understanding of the authority of the truth of God's word. To illustrate that danger, let me just talk to you. Remember I said that people don't know their source of truth now. It's it's coming from so many angles, so many medias. This was last night. Uh, uh, well, actually, it's 30th, two nights ago. This is the first, isn't it? So two nights ago, this came across um, the news, and it says this. The shack continues in number one spot. And it, this is the article. The shack, that, by the way, is the title of a book, uh, had, had held first place in the New York Times bestseller list for paperback trade fiction for the 33rd week. So the number one fictional book sold in paperback in America, is this quasi-religious Christian book called The Shack. Though its author, William Young, is not a member of a church or is even reticent to call himself a Christian, and though its doctrine of God is grossly heretical, the novel is being touted as a helpful Christian book. In fact, The Shack has been endorsed by contemporary Christian music artist Michael W. Smith, Noted best-selling multi-million copy Christian author Eugene Peterson and others I've never heard of. But this was what the article continued. This was in the Christian uh, booksellers um, report. It says this, An excellent writer, young plays to the emotion and touches on legitimate hurts and concerns. The author excels in imbuing his deity with attributes of love, forgiveness, and mercy. And this is what many people have responded to. Increasingly, in novels and movies, the Lord is blithely used as one of the characters and given words from the mouth of man. Now, if you think about that, in the secular world, it happens all the time. 
I mean, how many times have you seen actors, you know, the Noah's Ark one and, and uh, others that, that they're God, you know, and it's almost laughable. And, and that's what society has lowered God down to movie fodder. But here's what a secular person said. Lynn Garrett, she's the Publishers Weekly religion section editor. So this is Publishers Weekly as the secular uh, book trade uh, journal. So it's kind of like the Wall Street Journal of Books. And she's uh, a senior editor, does the religious book reviews. She said that the book success, the Shack success, is most unusual. It's every self-published author's dream to start out this way and sell at this level. Then she was asking, why are so many people buying the Shack? And this is what she says. People are not necessarily concerned with how orthodox the theology is. People are into the story and they want a book that strikes them emotionally. Now, do you remember what it said in Ephesians? The sign of immaturity is being a child and being moved and, and flow with every wave and wind of doctrine. And primarily, it is an emotional response. Saying that that touches me, that feels good, that makes me feel better. That's the itching ear syndrome that Paul said was coming 